Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Noventus for uh, inviting me here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about space. Um, and assuming this works. In a sector that has been growing dramatically over the last few years. Uh, so the, the demand for more information, for more communication services, uh, but also for more data about what's happening to our planet is actually driving a growth, an exponential growth of, uh, of space-based uh, information, space-based data. And this is very much driven by these applications and what we are seeing is that uh, what used to be a, a fairly small uh, sector, uh, it will grow to about a trillion dollars by 2040, not 2030 like in the, in the slide. But this is being driven very much by our need to manage our planet better, to communicate better. And we sometimes forget that uh, many, of the, many of the applications that we rely on, many of the things we rely on in our life are actually underpinned by space, data and technology. So when we are actually controlling how much food production we are doing in the world, how much how the climate is changed, that is very much dependent on information that satellites in orbit, uh, mostly in low Earth orbit, but also in higher orbit, are actually providing us. And because of that, we are seeing this growth in the industry, and we are uh, ourselves uh, benefiting from that. So as a company, we are now uh, delivering satellites, components for satellites, but also we started delivering space data as a service. And what we are seeing is that as we are moving from just people just wanting satellites or, or wanting to build their own assets, they are actually coming to us, particularly from areas where more data companies, for instance, are now coming to us and asking us, could I just have actually access to the data? Could I, rather than uh, having to own my own assets, having to own satellites, having to own ground stations, having to have the people to do that, could I actually just have the data that I need? And because of that, we are seeing a, a, a growth in what we call space data as a service. It was something that uh, a few years back you wouldn't see in our, uh, in our, um, in our revenue stream, but now you are seeing it's already about 9% of what we are doing, and it is growing. And ultimately, we are expanding the company. So we are currently a company in the last 12 months, we did about 188 million sec. Uh, we have a back, uh, back order, um, or the backlog of about five, 418 million sec. Uh, and this is a mixture of both Subsystems components that we sell to other people, uh, to other satellite manufacturers, but it's also uh, something that we, uh, but also satellites and, as I said, space data as a service. So we are 180 people around um, uh, in six companies in five different countries, uh, and we are organized very much in three main areas of business, as I mentioned. So we've got companies in our group that focus in providing the, the building blocks of satellites, building blocks of uh, space technology. Uh, we've got two companies here in Sweden, one in the Netherlands, one in South Africa. And they build, they specialize in individual components that you need to then build satellites. We then have companies that specialize more on the building satellites, bringing together all these parts and uh, building them into satellites and to actually provide the services associated with that. And that can be communications, that bringing the data down, uh, managing that data on behalf of our customers. And those are companies that we've got in Scotland and in the US. So we expanded into the US not only because we wanted to, to have our uh, geographical footprint in the US a few years back, but also because we wanted to actually um, gain the knowledge of actually operating constellations. So the company we have in the US owns its own satellite, is delivering data every day to customers. And then of course, as I mentioned, we are also doing this data business that is selling uh, space data as a service. And that's where we see quite a big growth for us. Now we focused on three areas, three main areas, weather and climate, what can we do to help 
weather and climate uh, activities. Maritime and energy, these are, this is an area that we have traditionally operated on. And then, of course, farming and forestry. That is probably the, the biggest user of uh, space data uh, in the world. And we focus on these because we, we do have some unique capabilities. So when it comes to weather and climate, we are, we, we, one of our companies is one of the world leaders in production of uh, subsystems uh, or instruments for weather monitoring. When it comes to maritime and energy, we are one of the first movers into what is, what is called the, the, the next big communication, integrated communication maritime system, that is VDES. Uh, we are working with uh, Saab here in Sweden and with Orpcom in the US to deliver a, um, a fully uh, integrated communication system for shipping. Uh, this is highly reliable, resilient communication. And at the same time, of course, we have unique technology. We as a company have been operating since, parts of our company have been operating since the 1990s. The, the, the bulk of our company has been operating since, the, to, since 2005. And what that means is that we have accumulated a, a huge amount of experience in how to build uh, satellites, how to operate them, and how to build components for satellites. I would just like to quickly run you through the, the results that we have for the, on the last quarter. So, we are seeing a growing momentum on our business. We, we have had, like most of the technology companies around the world, over the last couple of years, some, uh, some issues with our suppliers. We have uh, had issues with uh, getting components that we needed to make satellites. Uh, and that has delayed a lot of the business plans that we had. It's not unique to us. But we are now seeing a recovery of the market. We are seeing that not only we are able to, to now start delivering because our suppliers are now more reliable, they have sorted out many of the problems they had, but we're also seeing a, a pickup in the number of orders. Many of, the, many of our customers, particularly for products, that is power systems, computers, uh, have, been, have been waiting to see how the, the world evolved. And I'm very glad to say that actually they are, they are come back to the market, they are buying again. And we are saying that many of the constellations that we had started working with uh, five years ago, four years ago, uh, initial design stages, they are now coming to us and saying, no, we, we want to go ahead with our constellation, we want to go ahead with our plans. And that has created quite a lot of interest in the market. So at the same time, we, we, because we are now being able to actually uh, start to finish many of the satellites and many of the components we had started some time ago, uh, we are seeing an uptake, uptake on, the, on, the, um, on the launches that we are doing. So we have three satellites to launch right now. Uh, one of our partners here in Sweden, OHP Sweden, has just launched the, the MAT satellite that had been waiting for a while. So, so we are starting to see the market recovering after two years of uh, some uncertainty. And our net sales have increased. Uh, our EBITDA and our operational cash flow have not, not improved as much as we wanted at this, at this part of the year, uh, as we had expected last year. But largely, that comes down to the fact that because of the delays that the industry suffered, uh, we have many projects, that many satellites that should have launched earlier in 2022. They are launching in late 2022. And that created a, a, a slowdown on the revenue for the company and on the cash, on the cash payments. So, but we remain with a very strong order backlog. And as I said, this is actually something that we are seeing starting to grow again. This is, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, good to see that the market is recovering. And as I said, we have now three satellites on the, on the launch pads. One, we will be on the first launch from the UK uh, on the Virgin orbit. We have two more satellites in, the, in Cape Canaveral, uh, ready to launch on the Falcon 9. And so the end of this year is going to be very uh, busy for us because it is about uh, delivering these satellites, commission and deliver them in orbit. And then we have, as I said, quite a busy last few months in terms of new contracts. Uh, many of these are for constellations. There are people coming back to us. This is work that we started two, three years, four years ago in some cases, but it's now starting to bear fruit. And that is actually quite, a, quite a, an important thing, and it's good to see. It's good to see that the market is uh, becoming resilient again. 
And as in terms of uh, growth plans, we are actually, uh, of course, uh, following the trends, the global trends. There are some global trends in terms of uh, data needs and service needs, and this is driving the growth of our company. So over the next few years, we are investing very much on farming and forestry. Uh, we are developing a constellation of satellites to provide data for farmers and for forest managers around the world. Uh, we are starting our VDES service. That's our plan. Over, uh, so we have, we have two satellites to launch with VDES uh, payloads for the maritime service, not only to, the, to track ships, but also to actually manage, uh, to help manage the shipping industry. And then, of course, we are working on weather and climate. Our team in Gothenburg and the team in Uppsala are actually working with the European Space Agency on the Arctic, on the Arctic weather constellation. So this is about monitoring our climate much better than what we are doing right now, being able to forecast much better uh, the weather. And what we see is a growth of uh, not only our baseline business, uh, and you can see in there, um, in the, in, the, in the salmon, the pink salmon color, uh, but also, but where we see the, quite a lot of more growth for the company is in our space data as a service and in the weather and climate. Those areas will drive uh, uh, quite a strong growth over the next few years, but our baseline business, selling products, selling components, selling satellites will continue to grow over the next few years. We see, we see a great future for this technology. So, the key takeaway is we are, we are operating on a market that is growing very fast. We are a company that has the technology and it has the knowledge and the experience uh, to, to address that market. And, and we see a, a very strong growth in space data uh, requirements. And that will drive us to actually grow our space data as a service business. So we are on the way to become a world leader in data and services from space. And I would like to invite you and others to, to actually join us in that journey. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Louis. Uh, please step into the center here. Uh, last year, I think it was last year, your colleague Per Anjansson was here and presented. And he mentioned your expansion uh, project. Yes. How is that going? I'm curious. Uh, so that is going well. So we are now starting phase 3A. So, uh, so we still have one phase to go. Uh, but so we are working with ESA and with our other partners uh, to, to actually develop new services from satellites uh, and in that process actually build a constellation of 10 satellites mm -hmm. based on that project. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going well. Mm -hmm. So how many satellites do you have in orbit right now and what are you looking at? How many do you think you'll be having in, let's say, five years? So we as a company, we own four satellites. We have built about 30 satellites uh, in, and launched them over the years, but we, we own four mm -hmm. that we have now. We have another eight for our own constellation to launch in the next, till beginning of 2024, end of 2023. We expect to grow that by another, uh, by another 20 satellites over the, over the next few years uh, after 2024. Mm -hmm. So the constellation will be a constellation around 30 satellites, uh, 28 satellites. Uh, in the next few years. Mm -hmm. So that's our, that's our expectation. Right. Well, thank you very much and best of yeah. luck. Thank you. Thank you.